Hello. Hello, Giles. How are you? Very good. Good to see you. Um, it's uh, that time of year where we think about the new vintage in Burgundy. And uh, uh, 2019 is the next uh, next vintage coming up in January, uh, time of great excitement. So could, can you just tell us a little bit about 2019? Um, are there any significant uh, features to the season, would you say? Well, I say it's an exceptional vintage. Um, it's, it's an exceptional vintage because it's um, the one that we have to sell now after the 18th. There was a previous exceptional vintage. But no, no, um, honestly speaking, it's really great vintage. Um, Sally, a bit, a bit short by quantity. Uh, short by quantity for a lot of different reasons. It's not one main reason. Usually when you have really a shortage in, in quantity, it's due to or frost or hail or whatever, uh, or, 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 or um, disease or whatever. Um, this year, it's a succession of small events. Uh, we had a bit of frost in, uh, in March, April. We had a bit of um, oidium in June. We had a bit of uh, heat in June and in July, two times for what we call the canicule one, really heat, uh, hot time for four or five days. And you can, I think that at every single, even like that, we lost between five to 10% of the harvest. And that at the end, when we peak, we peak the harvest that was half than an usual harvest what we're looking for. Then we are much more around 18 to 22 hectares per hectare, when we are looking much more to 35 hectares per hectare. And it's a short vintage in the quality, uh, but the quality is really amazing. I mean, that uh, we have a very balanced vintage. Uh, we begin to pick, pick on September 16th, not too early, not too late. I think a very good date for, for picking now, when usually we have much more uh, picking dates now on on September 10th, or September 5th, or, or like in 2020, August 24th. But um, it was really good season. And I like that also because I love the end of the, of the, of the, ripe, the ripening process in September. I like this cold sun from September. And we have 15, 15 20 days of cold uh, sun of September on the ripeness that keep the acid, but also help for the for the phenical uh, ripeness. Then, um, no, I, I, I really think that 19 will be one of the top vintages we have ever made. Uh, sadly, small in quantity, but really great in quantity. And in smaller quantity. quantity because, so the, the berries were small. There were bunches, but the berries... Yeah, were small. bunches were small. Uh, at the time of the flooring, you have... You, the, the weather at the flooring time wasn't that good. Then we have a lot of abortion of the of the of the floor. Then we have less grips on on the benches. Um, and after we have we had this, as I say to to you, this heat in July on, on, on June and July. And at every single time, even we don't remove the leaves. We keep the leaves uh, because if a leaf is on the vines, because the vines need that. Um, uh, there is some some grapes uh, they saw that saw the sun and sometimes for some of them are, it was so hot that the the, the, the the heat on the sun on the on the grapes um, uh, dried them uh, that it's also really a real part of the of the small quantity but it's really a succession of a lot of different elements and it's good to have a small quantity due to different factors when it's due to one factor. Usually it's, it's inequal on, on your wine. You can feel it. When you have hell, you can feel it. When you have frost, it's different, but you can feel it as well. When you have a lot of different reasons for the decreasing of the, of, the, of the yield, you don't feel any of the elements because it's tiny elements by tiny elements that, that give you this small quality, but good quality at the same time. And with it being a, a, a very dry vintage as well, um, yeah. which is, uh, and of course, the heat. There's more of a challenge than it, than let's say ten or fifteen years ago. How how do you adapt to that? How do you uh, how do you fight against that in the vineyards, in the in the winemaking? Uh, Organic farming, uh, no herbicide, no pesticides. Um, um, Biological farming as well. We are in biological farming for twelve years now. 
uh, pushing the roots to go deeper and deeper because you can find water uh, at one meter deep. You can find water under the big stone, then it's not, it's not flowing water. It's just water below the, the, the stones and like that, uh, under the, the, the stones, but roots can find that. Then the idea is to push the roots to go deeper than the topsoil, one, one foot of topsoil, um, uh, to go deeper, because when you have heat, it's really the topsoil which is really dry, it's not the, 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 the deep soil. And then as soon as you push your roots to go deeper, they are not eating what you have on the soil, but they are eating what you have deep on the soil. They don't drink what you have on the soil, up, but what you have deep on the soil, and it's really eating that. It's also the management of the canopy, uh, which is slightly different than that it was 20 years ago. Uh, it's, it's a lot of small elements that you have to follow on. You have to be very reactive in what you are doing. It's not going too fast in the vineyard to do something, but you have to be able to put your team one day on this vineyard because there's issues like that. And that's why we have a big team at the estate. It's because we need to have people on the vineyard right at the, uh, at the, at the good moment on, on in the good, good quantity as well. And during the summer, we have 12 people on the vineyard. Um, when you make 12 rows on, on, a, on a vineyard, on your turn, you make 24 rows. Okay, you, you can imagine that you can make a good job on quickly. That is very important. And so that applies to the harvest as well. So picking at exactly the right moment. Do, I mean, do, do you find, is that ripening window shorter than it used to be or? Uh, no, I don't think so because that, especially in September, it's beginning to be slightly cooler. Um, Pinot Noir is, especially when with all vines is ripe on the, on the estate about at the same time. I mean, that we make a choice by testing the grape and say, okay, we can wait a bit more for this one on, on a bit less for this one. But um, during the week of harvest that we have, everything is the most, uh, is, is, is ripe. On the ripeness is not perfect ripeness. The perfect ripeness on my point is, I will say, um, 60, 70%, 70% of perfect ripeness, 15% of under ripeness, 15% of over ripeness. This is a balance you need to have in, in, your, in your vineyard on during uh, harvest time. After we was on the sorting table, you can remove the re over ripeness, but the complexity of the wine, especially when you're in massive selection or not a kernel selection, is to have this 70% of perfect ripeness on 30% on both sides, 15 and 15, over on the ripe, because it's giving the complexity as, as well on the, of the wine. Then picking is not really an issue, on my point. Or picking okay. dates is not really an issue. And then even less of an issue really if you is then winemaking. So really the, the winemaking is done by the time you're you're pressing <laughs> yeah. already. So for you it's just simple. Uh, uh, the normal winemaking, very yeah. not touching. Uh, a, a little bit of whole bunch this year. Uh, uh, um, a bit like, like 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 every year. It's a bit more, probably twenty five percent on the clay premier cru, clay premier cru are shown. You yeah. show Brulé, um, Clos des Grandes Vignes in, um, in, in Louis Saint Georges, and on the Grand Cru, uh, Les Chaussons de la Romane. Um, uh, yeah, I will say about 25%. But we, we select that. So it's at the end of the sorting table, remove all the perfect um, uh, uh, bunches and put that on the, on the sorting table, uh, on, the, on, the, on the vat. Then it's not an idea to be at 25%, but this kind of vintage, you can have 25% of perfect. Uh, grape to, to, to put in, which is giving a bit more complexity as well to the wine. Complexity and freshness, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I'm sad not to be there with you tasting, but um, tell us how, how the wine's tasting at the moment. Um, uh, then we are on November 5th today. Um, uh, we, I tasted this morning with uh, two of your friends. Um, on, um, we are at different levels of aging. Uh, we already have racked um, the white Clos des Grandes Vignes on the village reds on couple of premier cru, like um, uh, Clos des Grandes Vignes red on, on um, Chaume red. Um, we, we made the racking um, late, oh, yeah, 20th of, uh, of August for the white on about the 10th 
of September for the Reds because I thought that the, the aging was good enough and we had to keep the freshness of the wine. Then the, the village on this premier cook really show very fresh, very vibrant, super elegant. Um, for the other wines, uh, they need more time. Uh, I think that we'll make a couple of uh, racking in about three weeks from now, uh, maybe for Susho or for Brûlé, this kind of stuff. Maybe Chazo, because I think it's quite almost finished on Renew as well. Um, uh, uh, on, on we need a bit more edging for Clovuso, for example, uh, that always needs a bit more time. But um, the wine usually uh, in November showed very well because, because it's Hospice de Bonne time and we have a lot of people coming and test. Um, I don't know that there's probably this understanding of the wine that they have to be great at the period. And they're really showing well, uh, fresh, and, and really very, very vibrant. Um, I, I have, I sometimes compare them to 2019 as a mix of 2010 for the precision on 2006 at the estate, which is a bit different from some other estate because I think that 2006 at Confisever was really different from the others um, uh, for this generosity that we can get in, in the wine. Then precise on Sirius like 10, but with a bit more fun um, that we had in those six um, on the same time. So it sounds like they sound like wines that might um, show and drink quite well young, but have the ability to age. Is that fair to say? Uh, I think that's what we need to have more and more with all the wines. I mean, it's really on the winemaking process that we follow um, it's more and more of that, and it's really my goal from the beginning, as you know. Um, uh, uh, one has to be good from the vet. If it's not good from the get of the vet, it would never be good. It would be differently good in the future, but you need, it's not a shame to open young wine, especially Burgundy. You just have to double decant them sometimes just to give them some air, because when you are, they are tight in the, in the bowl, they need to find some air. On the double decanting for young wine is good. But I think that, yeah, it's, it's one vintage that we, will edge really well, but with a kind of freshness. Great. Well, my, my mouth's watering. I look forward to tasting them soon. Um, thank you very much, Louis-Michel. Much appreciated. It was a pleasure to see you.